Never mind. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Zulu. Hi there. Uh, Zulu, just so you know, there's some construction going on in my area, so if you hear any loud bangs, no, sorry, can't do anything about That's that. That's right. Uh, so, uh, it says you're lib left. Do you have any, like, more specific beliefs so I know who I'm talking to here? Well, I'm put on lib left because I have... I don't really identify with any party i don't have a specific ideology i'm more of an inch issue by issue guy okay um so earlier you were saying that um democracy is fine because it can't vote on issues which would infringe on people's rights so what do you think people's rights are uh i don't know i don't have specific but the UN rights is a good br blueprint. So, do you think rights then are given by the government, or do you think they're intrinsic? Well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe that we were like created. Sure, or you don't have to don't be like have... religious or anything. Just like, do you think they're intrinsic to like, you know, are they something that which the government gives you, or are they just I think naturally that for within human well-being? I think that for well-being of a human, there are specific things they need. Yeah, but like, where do they come from? How do you know which are rights and which are just, uh, you know, rules? Uh, mostly my moral compass. Mostly what's right and what's wrong. There's, there's no like specific place they come from. But like, you were saying before it, it came from the UN uh, Human Rights um agreement well, i'm the uh, human rights council i think it is i uh, know i think it's a good blueprint okay so i don't i think they've got it right so or I would... at least close enough i would just kind of encourage you to try and think on that because i don't know if we're gonna get anywhere there so before you were saying that taxation is fine because it helps the longevity of the state do you want to like expand on that at all well, I see taxation as a necessary evil. I mean, you, in my opinion at least, in order to have a successful nation, you need some sort of a state. I mean, Even if it's a minarchist society. And, yeah, that's basically it. Sure, but um, well, I don't want a successful nation. I want anarchy. So... No. Because I don't, no. <laughs> I don't want some sort of uh, well, government. Well, I don't want anarchy. <laughs> well, why not? Well, I'm opposed to it. Yeah, but why? There are many reasons. One is, for example, there's nothing stopping corporations from creating company towns. There's nothing stopping corporations from doing what they did in Texas. Yeah, I don't know if you heard, but the people who didn't get their power cut off they got a bunch of huge bills for almost no reason. Okay, so um, as for the company towns thing, There's I don't think... There's nothing stopping, not just corporate regulation, it's just that corporate regulation is, you know, the most widespread thing. Sure, so... It's going to be the thing that affects all of us. As for the company towns, I don't see why we should try to stop company towns. If a company, if McDonald's wants to go off and start a little uh, homestead somewhere... Why should we be stopping that? If people want to go live there, then they'll go and live there. You know, that's their choice. And as for the power being cut off, well, uh, this is sound, historically this is um, this is sounding a whole lot like, you know, a lot of power grids are owned and maintained by the government, where they all say, hey, we're going to give this contract to this one specific company, and they get to make all the rules. Uh, so that's not really what a free market would be like. A free market would be, I would imagine, far more decentralised. And it's also kind of ties into the whole idea of price gouging, because price gouging is quite a good thing, I think. Well, yes, but at some point, if there's nothing stopping someone from doing it, there's going to be a monopoly. Someone is going to rise. It already happened during the Gilded Age. Vanderbilt had a monopoly on rail tracks. I mean, the Gilded Age wasn't anarchy. No, but it was very much free of corporate regulation. I mean, if you're going to be the... let them do whatever the hell they wanted. If you're the only one who is going to be building railway tracks, I don't understand why you shouldn't have a monopoly on railway tracks. If somebody else builds railway tracks, then that's fine. Because, I, I mean, even in the Gilded Age, there was still patents and whatnot, which is government interference in the market. 
Well, yes, but monopolies are inherently bad, aren't they? I would say that... Well, they're not inherently bad. They're bad if they get there them. through coercion. I think monopolies are less efficient, and that's why they fail in the free market. Well, they get there through, you know, being superior, but at some point they're going to get comfortable. Sure, well, and then... The problem with monopolies is... But then when they get comfortable, there, they, they, they it's fail. Your only option, it's your only option. Can't yeah, go anywhere else. It's It only remains your only option if either they have all of a resource, which is um, very unlikely, uh, or they have some sort of government-backed monopoly. Like, they have, uh, you know, uh, Disney has a monopoly on producing Star Wars movies, which is illegitimate because they don't have that you don't have a right over that they intellectual would, property they, they wouldn't in ancap they wouldn't have the right over intellectual property so what no there would be no, no such thing as intellectual property my intellectual property uh, well they're not stealing any, anything from you some huge movie franchise any blow can just destroy it well i mean i guess you can cry about it but their intellectual property isn't legitimate okay but what stops us from that's already been tried, well, okay, semi-tried with China. Any yeah, and they're company succeeding. Any wants to found a company in the rest of the world, they also have to have a specific patent in China. Yeah. I mean, That's we, why can, they we can talk about China. Toilets in China. It's like uh, in Shenzhen, China is currently... No, no, no let, me, let well, me finish this. I'm, okay. I have an overarching point when it comes to China. What I'm saying is, fuck, I forgot my point. <laughs> Go on. Okay. Okay, so um, in China, Shenzhen, it used to be like this little backwater town nobody cared about, but then they were they like, turned it into a special economic zone where they basically removed a whole lot of regulations, and one of those regulations was specifically IP law. There were no more patents. There was no more intellectual property of any sort, and what happened is it is now the most technologically advanced city on the planet, like all it is the tech capital of the world, but there are no patents. And I'll tell you why. It's because there are no patents. You can just... They don't think of it as stealing over there. They think of it as sharing. When they say, hey, that guy's making a better it's computer L. than me. If I can reverse engineer his computer and do it better than him, I make more money. So it's this sort of cat and mouse well, game. I do agree that patents shouldn't be a thing. But when it comes to like films and movies and artistic type of property, I do think that there should be some sort of intellectual property when it comes to that. Well, I why? think that if someone wants to copy a Dell computer, they should be able to. Well, what's the distinction there? Why should there be for artistic pursuits, but not for technological pursuits? Because uh, it's a little bit more personal, isn't it? I mean, I imagine it's the a, person there's who... There's a difference between I'm going to write a book about my struggles and some prick is going to turn it into a sci-fi porn hub fantasy... <laughs> And there's a difference between, hi, I'm Xiaomi, I'm going to make MOI, and someone is going to steal it from me and do it ten times better. Sure, it might upset the author that somebody has um, adapted their works, but didums. Sorry, what? Didums. Why should I care that it upsets the author? They don't have, that doesn't mean that they have a right to tell other people what they can do. Intellectual property is basically saying that if I come up with a recipe, nobody else is allowed to come up with a recipe. If I have, if A and B both own an equal parcel of land, will they each have a quarry on that parcel of land? It's identical in every way. And then A decides that they want to shape some of their stone into a statue. That is telling B that suddenly they can't shape their stone, which they own, into an identical statue. And I, I think that's the ridiculous. technological patterns shouldn't be. Well, no, that's thing, artistic. At least they should have. Sta some statues sort are artistic. Culture. Statues are artistic, but someone can, someone can copy it. They yeah. can say, "Oh, it's the same statue," but they need the consent of the author. Why? They need the consent of the guy. Well, that's who what I'm saying. Why? Because it's theirs. No, it's not. You can't I don't, own an if idea. I would write a story. I wouldn't want some prick to go and copy it and make millions. I of know, dollars. and I would like everybody else's money. What people like isn't relevant to this discussion. I'm saying, okay, there is. A and B both have an equal part of land where they each have a stone quarry on that part of the land. And A takes some of his stone and shapes it into a statue. And B wants to shape his stone, which B owns, into an identical statue because he likes the way it looks. And then A says, no, you're not allowed to do that. Why not? It's B using his own property. Yeah, it's B using his own property to 
copy the property of someone else. So let what? me put it, let me put it this way. It's plagiarism. Okay. Someone should ha should get money for someone Why? else's success if they were the ones who originally created it. Why? The guy who made the first computer should get some money if some prick stole his idea and said, I imagine, look. I imagine he would get a lot of money because he's the first one to do it so he can get it out to market first. Well, he's probably yeah, the most expert person doesn't? in the field. What if? Well, then he should have acted he faster. Gets unlucky? Well, then, uh, unlucky for him. Well, shit happens. If you don't know, the guy who created Batman didn't actually create Batman. Mark Zuckerberg okay. only made one third of Facebook, and then he stabbed all of his friends in the back and said, oh, yeah. look, it's mine. And that may well suck, but that doesn't mean that you can suddenly rob people. Well, yeah, shouldn't we, shouldn't we protect people from things that suck? Um, Isn't the point can... of governing to make your subjects happy? I mean, well, there shouldn't be governing. Don't do that. Most people say I'm going to make myself happy. You shouldn't have some sort of central government which uh, tells people how they may act and where they may go in order to please people. That's not how society should be run. We should have a free I society. I would say that it's better to please everyone seventy percent than to please a couple people a hundred percent. Sure, you might say that, but why? Because. It's better. Like, it's it, better for more people to be happy than less people to be happy. It would surely please me a whole lot if uh, we didn't have people being inf having their rights infringed. That would please me a whole lot. I imagine it, it would please, please you, but most who 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 most isn't people don't give a shit. Who isn't pleased by having their rights not infringed? Who is upset with that scenario? Well, some people would give them up. For example, taxation. So yeah. Our main issue. So the people who are upset with my system are people who want to infringe on other people's rights. Those are the only people who are upset with what I'm proposing. No. Well, yes, I'm by definition. Because what I'm proposing is that nobody's rights are infringed, and what you're and well, yes, you are saying that people would be upset by that. Would bring company towns where other people's rights are being infringed. No, your your, your rights aren't your rights aren't would infringed. Would become a corporate shithole. You, your rights aren't infringed because you decided to move to McDonald's, New Jersey, and McDonald's said, hey, when you move here, we own everything, no, so you're McDonald's, kind of our back and win. For, uh, McDonald's, the guy who runs New Jersey, suddenly stop fucking you in the ass. Because okay, they you, can write you a should, law, because they are basically authoritarian. Then you shouldn't have moved into his house. Town. You shouldn't have moved into his house. That's his property. Uh, you know, uh, upsetting for you, but why would you, why would you accept that deal? Yeah, but what if you moved there... Because you were promised an actual good life. Because oh, when well it then, started, fucking McDonald's be more New suspicious Jersey in future. Was a nice place. Then be more sp suspicious in future. Go start your own town. That's not my problem. So what you're saying is don't accept bad you contracts. Create a system that doesn't protect people from doing a few stupid things. Because fuck them. Uh, yeah, if you make a stupid decision, you should live with that decision. We shouldn't rob other people in order to stop well, you from making stupid decisions. we help a common man? You can help them all you want with mutual aid and charity. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with you helping that guy. I just don't want to. He made a stupid choice. I don't want to help him. Okay. Okay, that's on you, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's on me. So... And, you know, if karma gets gets me back and I am I am stuck in the muck, you don't have to help me. <laughs> no, but you see, the collective does thrive, and by collective I mean most people, does thrive on the fact that most people are happy. Okay. The uh, last thing we want is for a state or a people, or, well, I don't know what the, I don't know if there's a word for English for it, Laos, like a people. Like, you know, the like a group of a nation, but without a nation. Like the Volk in German. No, I don't speak German, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, okay. the Volk. Like, no. what I'm trying to get at here is the only people who are upset and would be unhappy with a free society are people who want to infringe on rights. I don't really care if they're happy or not. You know, if you're unhappy that you can't uh, steal from someone, then I suppose that's your problem. Well, 
Yes, but you're only stealing a little bit and you're giving a shitload back. No, you're not giving a shitload back to them. You're stealing from them and giving to other people. You're giving them infrastructure. You're giving them electricity. And couldn't they pay for those life. things on their own? I don't know how it works in your country. Maybe it's different, but here, no, over here it's taxes. Unless you use too much of it. Hmm? Over here it's taxes. Taxes pay for a lot of things because we have a massive government. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You and it would be a, a lot better if we didn't have that. It would be far better if people if paid it for it themselves. If it's you pay a lot more. Uh, no, you pay a lot less when it's uh, privatized. No, because it's personal for you. It's no, an entire you, grid. Sorry, it's, it's a huge investment. And it's personal. Yeah. When I pay $200 for tax, so, uh, sorry, $200 okay. for electricity, I'm not just paying for me, I'm paying for my neighbor, who's also yeah. paying $200, and my neighbor's neighbor is also paying $200, and together we have 600 which is enough to cover the whole block. So let me ask... But when a company I mean, has to steamroll you through are, and you... put in an entire electrical grid... For all of those houses, it's going to cost a shitload. You are absolutely now, allowed to. to you are absolutely allowed to engage in collective bargaining. You are allowed to engage in collective bargaining in a free society. That is absolutely fine, but it has to be voluntary. If if your neighbor doesn't want to have power to his house, you shouldn't force him to pay for power to his house because he okay, doesn't want what it. What about your neighbor when they don't want to pay for a street light or something that you can't take away? Well, that, that way you should have... Like street, uh, you can't stab when a guy's eyes out and say, no, when you're you didn't pay. Pay me $20 and I return you your eyes. When you are building a new... You can't stop someone when you're, from looking at a street light. A street light when, is incredibly expensive mm, and, and it when, costs a lot to maintain it. And when you are building a new block of houses... When you're building a new housing development, you would have whenever people move in there, they have some sort of contract where they would agree to pay these things. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, but in a free society, they're going to want... First of all, let's cut the part about the contract. Who's going to finalise it? Why should we... There's no government. Why should we cut that part? No... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why should we cut that part? No, I'm not saying cut it out. I'm saying, like, ignore it for a minute and move on. Okay. I'm saying let's pretend the contract whatever what happens when someone wants to back out of that contract what happens they would arbitrate because this is a free society you should let the guy do whatever he wants you can't um, tell him okay so in the contract you would probably have a clause where if you back out then you have to pay x sum that happened before uh, the government got involved in contracts it was already a thing sorry you cut up you have to pay so, uh, yeah, so there would be a clause in the contract where if you broke the contract, you would have to pay a certain amount. And that was already a thing before a government got involved in contracts. Okay, but then the guy doesn't want to... You can't force him not to look at the bloody streetlight. Okay, so if he I don't hurt, see what your problem there is. So he, he might look at a streetlight. He's paying for the streetlight. If he backs out of the contract... If he backs out of the contract, then decides, you have you know appropriate what, compensation. It, I'm stay here. Well, then it's your then it's not his Sorry? property anymore, so you can evict him. It, you'd you could set the contract up such that when you move into our covenant community, if you don't want to abide by the rules, then we can remove you from this covenant community, and you have to pay this amount of money. And then if he breaks the contract, you can do that. You can have him pay a certain amount of money, and you can remove him. That is perfectly valid in a free society. So you're just going to create government with pretty colours? No, that's not government. It's perfectly voluntary. Well, governments are perfectly voluntary. No, they're you not. Move into an area with less regulation. No, uh, that is not that is not the case. Like the a place like Pashtunistan. The government does not own the land that I am currently residing on. They do not own it. They just simply claim it because they have a gun. And if they, yes, if they I, do they own it. They don't own it. No. How do you think ownership works? No, you say, you buy it, but they own it. That's so, how nations say ha, I yes, own this. I know do that's how that it works. They, so how do you how do you think Mexico ownership works? Says, how do you think ownership works? Well, Can I just simply buy something I, in its mind? But uh, technically, uh, a nation. A couple of months owns ago, I everything. claimed the moon. By the way, a couple of months ago, I claimed the moon. So, do I own the moon now? No. When a Why nation not? claims something, the only the, the only time when they actually do have it is when the rest of the nation say, "Yeah, you're right. You do have that." Well, I disagreed. I didn't. I, I wasn't party to that contract, so no, they don't own it. Too bad. The other guys oh, don't well, agree with you. Literally everybody so else. You don't have you, it. But you said that everybody in the nation has to agree. I don't agree. So they don't own it. 
I also don't agree that they own anything. So they don't own anything. No, I didn't say everybody. I said the majority. You didn't unless, say the majority. Unless you said I everyone. did say everybody, then I'm wrong. Sorry. A good example is Israel. Many people don't recognize it. Others do. So why is it depends the on the country you're on? So Israel how... does own that land. But you see the problem here. You're presupposing the nation. You're saying the majority of the nation has to agree on what the nation owns. But to do that, you have to know what the nation is in the first place. What if I'm not part of the nation? If you're not part of the nation, then who gives a shit about you? Well, then they don't own my say land. What that nation will but do? That's that's what I'm it's saying. Infringing on your rights. You are saying unless that nation is like invading you. You are you saying can't say it to know to know what the nation owns. You have to know. You have to survey everyone in that nation. But to know who is in the nation, you have to know what the nation owns. No, not it's who circular. Is in the nation. Well, the if you don't know who it is, agree to what each nation owns. So other nations. That's Yes. But how did those nations come into being? How did the first nation come into being? Well, actually, in reality, we do not know. So the, if there you don't are many know, theories no, about but, it in history no, but how, how theoretically, came. how theoretically could it come into being if other nations need to recognize a nation well, for it to be a nation? Well, states, for example, like Greece, we know how the first Greek yes, nation. No, no, no. Formed. Like, tell me, it, if you need city states came together and said, "We both own this now." No, do you don't understand here, right? How, if you need other nations to recognize a nation for it to become a nation, there were no nations. Mm -hmm. How does nation one come into being if there are no other nations to recognize that well, nation? No, that is how it is now. Back then, it used to be, fuck you, I have an army. Exactly. So Back it's then, coercive. Back then, it used to be, you know what, you, you're right, it's aggressive. this is your exactly. land. No, I'm invading you. So that's aggressive, so they don't Back legitimately then, own it. it was that. Now it's, let's come to an agreement. Do you I have this town, you have this town. Do you think if I rob you, and then I have that, ro and I keep that money for long enough, do I suddenly own it? Actually, there is a law in the United States that says that... Yeah, I don't care about laws in the United States. I care about your ethics. If I robbed you of everything you own, if and I kept it for long enough, do you think I would own that? How wars work. No, if I robbed you and I took all of your money and I kept it for long enough, at what point would I own it? You would own it from, well, technically it's mine. Yes, I it's yours, it exactly, I agree. So at no point do I own it, no, just because I stole on. it. No, let me finish. Let me finish. I think I own that money. I claim I own that money, but I can't do shit because you have it. Just like back when Britain would invade yeah. France, we're talking France about ethics would be like, here. Oi, we're, you we're took my land, ability. and Britain would say, "What are you going to do about it?" We're not talking about ability. We're talking about ethics, right? You might not have the ability yes. to stop slavery, but slavery is still wrong. Yeah. So when I take your money, I don't own that. Even after th five thousand years of me having it, you still own that money, and I sh should still give it back to you. That it would be the right thing to do. Yeah. So the fact, so when yeah. the initial conquest of the land I currently live on happened by some nation state because they had more swords, that doesn't mean that they own it. And at no point did they start owning it. I own it. When did it become yours, though? It happened thousands of years ago. Well, uh, somebody built a house on this Your land. Father wasn't even born. Somebody built a house on this land, so they will have owned this land under the house because they built it. And well, the, that house was and probably it was built before the country was made. Most houses uh, whoa, are no, no, built no, no. before a country was made. This house was built like very new. long after. This house is not thousands of years old. Hmm? This house is not thousands of years old. It's maybe 50 yeah, years old. That's what I'm most. saying. You bought that land after the government conquered it. The government no, no, is no. allowing you somebody, to purchase that piece of land. Somebody at some point probably paid the government money to build here. Uh, the government didn't own it, so you know they were just they were paying money when they didn't have to ethically. No, they were paying for the government didn't have to, to allow them. It, But the government didn't own the, the land. We agree that the government didn't own the land. But we agree that the government didn't own the land. No, you never did. Yes, we did because we said when you when you take something that land that you have a few certain rights and that you have a say no 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 that, no, that was not what we but agreed. the government still owns it no no that was absolutely not what was agreed i said when i take money from you at no point do i start owning it 
So, so the oh. same applies to land. When the government comes around here with a bunch of swords and says, hey, we claim that all this land is ours, they don't own it. Yeah, but ethics don't matter. Do ethics they? don't when matter. When it comes to things like this. Ethics don't matter. When it comes is that your argument? Things like here? This, ethics, ethics they absolutely matter. matter. They're all that matter. When it comes matters. to nations going into war, they're all they? that matter. I'm not talking about nations going into war. I'm saying at some point the government claimed this land, but they didn't own it. Yes. At some point they claimed this yes. land, but they did nothing to own it. How do you think ownership happens? Do you think just when you claim something you own it? Because I claimed the moon. I told you that. No, I think that when you take it from someone or you find it and nobody has it, then you own it. When you claim something, okay, I I find Centauri. It. I um, I find Proxima Centauri. Do I own Proxima Centauri now? I find it. Uh, nobody owns it right now. Nobody's claiming to own it right now. I claim it. Do I, do I own it now? Uh, yeah. So I own it. Pretty much. Nobody's claiming um, the moon no at the moment. There's no laws saying you don't. So nobody's claiming to own you the moon find at the moment. The land, I if claim you have to own the moon. Swords to kick out the natives. Oh, you so you it. have to have enough swords. So you are taking it from someone. Well, not Proxima Centauri. Proxima, there's no one in Proxima Centauri as far yeah, as Yeah, exactly. Know. There's nobody there. So, Nobody's yeah, doing anything there. you didn't there. take it away from anyone. Exactly. You didn't take it from the government. So do so, I yeah, own it? you own it. So I own Proxima Centauri. Yeah, you own Proxima Centauri. I, uh, Congratulations. You, your argument is I own Proxima Centauri. I don't see why not. Your idea of ownership is baffling to me. You can just claim something and then you own it. Okay, I own every single part no. of the universe not currently no, claimed. No, people have to agree that you own that. Agree that you own that, otherwise you're just the guy sitting in a corner saying... So you think ownership is subjective? Is How... So, de so therefore, a state cannot possibly steal something. Therefore, a state cannot possibly do any sort of crime. Do you understand how this is reductive? I'm not saying that. That is exactly what you're saying. That is the implication. In the world stage, a state owns what the other states agree they own. What you are saying? No, I don't care about the world stage. I don't that. care about the world stage. I care about your ethics. But my ethics don't matter in the world they, stage. They, I know they don't matter to like fucking Xi Jinping and Donald Trump. I know they don't matter to those guys. I care, but they matter to me, okay? I care about your ethics. I care about what you think is correct in the world. So how do you think ownership comes into being? I think ownership comes into being when someone A creates something. So if I like make this, it's mine. Not by patent. If I write a book, if, oh, sorry, no. If I, like, make a chair, it's mine. If I made it with my materials. If I buy something from someone, it's mine. So this is sounding a whole lot like uh, libertarian property rights, where you can either homestead something, is the term, or you can voluntarily trade it. Those are the two ways that you can uh, come into ownership of something. And through those, uh, the government does not pass those tests. They did not homestead the land, and they did not buy off somebody who had. Yeah, but... Uh, well, the government did buy Louisiana, they did buy... Places. Yeah, but nobody had homesteaded it. Nobody what? Nobody had homesteaded it. Nobody had, like, What's done anything to improve that land. So basically, homesteading is... Um, to give you an example, say we are on a desert island, and I build a hut. I own that hut because I have homesteaded it. I've put my labour in, I've mixed my labour with the ground and with the trees to create yes. a hut there. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so that's what Homestead, nobody had done that to so Louisiana. When you said, what are my ethics about buying, some, about ownership, I thought you like meant personal ownership. Now, when it comes to nations or states, usually, uh, no, not usually, sorry, I was about to go again into the what we claim. A state owns what they took or what they bought or what they found no well, okay so basically but... they have all the personal rights that you have and all no do you not see that these are contradictory to each other the state can't legitimately own things because the state is necessarily aggressive on these things if you agree with the homestead principle and voluntary trade, you have to necessarily be against the state, because it does not follow these in its ownership. 
Well, usually in order for the state to own something, they've went in there, they've built a couple of towns, a couple of colonies. Okay, so uh, does that and fall under the if, setting? how did they build them? They built it with tax money. They robbed those resources. They still own it. No, you don't. Doesn't if, matter if, how you got that money. If if I if I take like uh, if, if you I take if I tear five thousand dollars from me and went and bought an iPhone, the iPhone is still yours. If if I tear down your house and use the resources to build a house for me, I don't own the house. I stole it all from you. You own the house, oh, and I probably a good bit more. If you demolish the house. Yeah, I've stolen from you, so you own what you what I stole from you. And probably a good deal more. Yeah, but you own the house. You own no, the I house don't. that you built. Because I've robbed you to build it. Yeah. And even even regardless of this, uh, let's say that the state does own exactly only the things that they build. They didn't build this house right here. So they don't own this house right here. So they don't get to say what they can do with this house right here. When it comes to states, they own the land they built that Why? house on. No, but they didn't build this house. If they didn't build that house, then they probably took it by force. No, they didn't take this and by force. They uh, probably took it by force in a So, war. would you say that I would be allowed to manufacture weapons in this house? This uh, the, the UK government doesn't want me to manufacture weapons in this house. Do you think I should be allowed to do that? No, because that's the Why UK not? government... Because that you, house, that but they didn't build that this. you're in, the land that you're standing on, is no, of the UK. They didn't build this house, though. We agreed that they, if if the, you your position was that only the things they yeah, build they own. there are different rights for nations, and there are different rights for people. No, but if, the, if it contradicts people those have rights, the same you, rights as nations, then everybody you, goes into everybody's house, you, and they you start can't to say, have Fuck con you, this is mine. You can't have rights that contradict each other. That doesn't make sense. Well, there's a difference between the political intricacies of a nation and the political... Oh, fuck, I can't speak. And the political intricacies of I hate Bob. I don't know how that relates. I'm saying that nations operate in a different way than people do. Yeah, I understand that I'm they operate in a different way, nations... but that way is not legitimate. I think it is. Why, though? Because you already agreed with the homestead principle and voluntary transfer, and the state's way of acting contradicts that. So how can you possibly hold these two contradictory opinions in your head? I agree that when it comes to people, I'm saying that the yeah, state so, has and, those rights too. And every single... The state is made of people. It's not like the state is some kind of alien no, entity. The state is a different thing. The state, the state is made of people. people. The state is just a bunch of people. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Yeah, so how can you possibly, if you apply those rights evenly to everyone, yeah, but those people put no, together no group of entity. people can no group of people can violate those rights. Do you think groups of people are allowed to violate rights? Is that what it is? So if I go get my neighbor no, and we I'm join a gang, can I rob the other neighbor? That, that group of people put together form a state that is different so how from do... one or two or three people. Yeah, but... But well, how? even the people that they govern. Okay, yes, but it's only different because other states recognise it, and we've already been over how that's logically invalid, because how did the first state come about? It's impossible. If states are only... The first state. Yeah, other states have the to recognise it, so, but there wasn't other states. Force. But, okay, but how, the first state but how did it become force. a state? But how did it, how did it become a state? Because you said states have to recognize well, each other the, to be states. The way that it became the first state became a state was by the anointment of God. That's but you said you didn't believe they, in God. Yeah, what I'm saying is that they used to say I was appointed by God. The king. Yeah, I, I know they used to God. say that, but I am also appointed by God, by the way. So am I a state now? No, but if the people Why believe not? that you were appointed by God and the people listen to you because what? of that. So if uh, so if I find one other person who thinks I'm appointed by God, am I a state now? Do I have the rights of a state? No, but if the entire nation thinks that you were appointed by God, but, that but, doesn't mean okay. you were appointed by God, but, but if everyone agrees that you were appointed by God, what as if, wrong as they may be, what if the entire that nation, gives you... What if the entire nation consists of you, one person and that person is me? Do I have the rights of a state now? No. 
Because I, mean, I, be I believe I was rules. appointed by God. If you, if you, but you said the entire nation has to believe you're appointed by God. Before to get that land, which now on the planet there's no uncovered land for you to do so with. Do you not understand? You said uh, you have there are different rights. Of, there are different rights for states and people. And you said a state has mm -hmm. to have everybody in that state believe that they were appointed by God to be a state. And everybody in my state believes that I was appointed by God because no, no, I'm the only person no, in my state. To listen to the so state. I follow. So I follow. To listen to the state. I listen to the, the my state. I listen to my state because I'm myself. So I listen to myself all the time. Yeah. Yeah. If so so I'm a state. So what? So what Jabbat, rights do I have Jabbat now? Is a good example. So what rights do I have now as a Jabbat state? Is a good example of what you're saying. So Jabbat because Jabbat because I am a state, what rights do I now have? Hell, man! If you invade France and you're able to take it. No, but what rights do I have? What are the rights that states have? That's what I'm getting at. Because I now am a state. We agree that I'm a state. So what rights do I now have? Well, you have the right to take ownership from the same way that a person would, and you have the right to take ownership by force or diplomacy. So I have a right to take. So I can rob you now. No, you can rob. That's my taking state. Own, That's what taking ownership by force. Well, states rob people all the time. They don't just rob other states. Yeah, but I'm not under your. So state I have. So I have a. So I have a right to rob you now. If you're the only person in your state. No, but, and no, but I, states rob and other. You can't take from me because my states take. States, my are, state states takes aggress. From me. States aggress on the citizens of other states all the fucking time. Have you heard of war? Yeah, that's called by force. Yes, I know. So by force, I can take your money, and you're fine with that. If my state lets you, or if my no, no, no. Let's let's let's, yeah. let's say let's say they didn't let you. Uh, let's say they didn't let me, and uh, you know I can just overpower them. Would that be ethically fine? Okay, let's put aside the fact that you were able to overpower an entire state yeah. by yourself. It's hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you were able to overpower them, and now I am under thine state, my Fuhrer, or king, or whatever you want me to call you, and I don't overthrow you, but hell, you overthrew fucking Greece. I can't do shit. But yeah. So you think you no state can force? possibly infringe on rights? So the so the Holocaust wasn't an infringement on rights, by your opinion? It was an infringement on their human rights. Yes. But you just said I would be allowed to take money from you and do whatever I want with you, because I'm now a state. Well, so I'll like do whatever you want. That would be authoritarian. I'm not okay with authoritarianism. But you said that as, as a state, I have a right to take from my citizens whatever property they may have. You, you know, yourself is your property. But in the world, yeah, Xi Jinping does whatever the hell he wants. No, no, but I'm asking about by your ethics, ethics. What you, you think is would ethically be a right? Nation. I'm asking what you by think my is. Ethics, I'm asking. You would be a hmm? I'm asking what you think is ethically correct. I don't care about what happens. I care about what is ethically correct. And you said it would be ethically correct. Okay, what's ethically that I... correct for me would be that once you took me, let's say that you're a warring nation, I don't like you, but whatever, you overpowered my state, you took me by force, you cannot oppress me, you cannot say, slave, clean my boots, I have certain things that I want to do, and you have to allow me to do those certain things, unless... They, they infringe on the states. Do you not rights. understand how... Well, it, in, it infringes on my high state rights by not doing what the state wants to do. Do you not understand how this is entirely arbitrary and pointless? Let's say that there is a state made up of... If you want to be democratic about this, let's say there are ten people who make up a state. Nine of those people want to have sex with uh, the one person who doesn't want to have sex. Would it be fine for them to force that person to have sex? Because, you know, it's democratically oh, permitted. Because that person has human rights. Uh, what are those human rights? I told you. I, I no, you didn't. You didn't actually ever list them. About them but the... yeah, you don't. Know, you don't I know don't, what those human rights are. So how do you ready. know that they are infringing on those human rights? Well, I would say that not being raped. Well, not being harmed is a human right. I don't. I... Okay. Here's what I'm saying. The only right you have is to not be aggressed against. To not have your per person or property aggressed upon. It's the NAP. The NEP and property rights, those are your rights. Property rights are human rights. 
Okay, hold on. Let me. I'm googling human rights now, and I'm going to list them and, to you. Yeah, and you're going to find the the UN page. The UN being a statist yes. entity. So you think states decide what your human rights are? So therefore, no state can ever infringe on your human rights. Well, most states have already agreed. On I don't care what states rights. agree on. Most of those states. I don't care what states agree oh, hold on. on. You're lo me... you're logically saying that a state cannot infringe on human rights because the states decide no. human rights. That is exactly what you're saying. No, I'm not saying... For God's sake, shut up, let me speak. No, that is what you're saying, though. I'm not saying that the state decides those human rights. Then where do they come the from? The people in that state decide those human rights by voting. Uh, there are plenty of states in the UN who don't have votes, but they have a say on what the human rights are. Yeah, yeah and the UN, well... They don't have any power over those states, and the power that they have is minuscule. No, 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 but like those but states have power over the UN. Those... Like China and Russia are both Sorry? on the UN. Uh, China and Russia are both yeah. on the UN Security Council, so they get to decide what the human rights are, and neither of those countries have votes. So, uh, where do those votes, where do those human rights come from? Those human rights come from those states, but hold on. Let yeah, me so they finish. come from the states. The UN has already has already put forth what those rights are yes but and they came from the when states china when russia i'm sorry so they come from states that is what you're saying they the, right now the human they come rights... from states and i agree with those okay states. so therefore a state cannot infringe on human rights because human rights no, come from the state. No, because it's not one state that agrees on what human rights are let's it's say the entire bloody un well, so the, the entire UN bloody UN is ran by China. The hell? China basically runs the UN at this point. No, they have a lot of allies. I do agree with that, but they don't run the UN. They basically run the UN, is what I said. Let's imagine a scenario where um, China takes over uh, the UN's votes and uh, China decides that it is not a human rights violation to kill Uyghurs. Would that be fine? This is a hypothetical scenario. Would that be fine? Would that by not be a ethics, failure? No, yes, so let's talk only about... Yes, let's, my ethics, no. So let's ignore geopolitics and talk only about your ethics. Where do you ethically think rights come from? Because you're just going to appeal to statism again, and I'm gonna, we're going to go in a circle here. Okay. My, what I think human rights are, come from me. And what I don't want to happen to me, what I don't want to happen to my fellow man. Yeah, so this is entirely arbitrary. Uh, this is not what rights are. This is just what you want to happen. This is an entirely egoist view of the world. Rights are universal. They cannot be denied to you. So what do you think? Let's just get through this. What do you think, by your ethics, not appealing to any geopolitics or anything like that, let's say that nobody in the world agrees with you, doesn't matter, what do you think the rights are? That cannot be denied to you. That's what our right is. It cannot be denied to you. What do you think the human rights are? I th I don't have a specific list. I haven't looked into it yet. Okay. So let's let's I don't have a let's just say list of shit. Uh, just give me a couple then. Right now. Sorry. Just give me a couple then. Well, not being physically or mentally harmed. Not being violated. Well, no, that's the same thing. What is mental harm? Oh, yeah, not being violated in a personal way, in a personal, uh, physical and emotional way. The right to property. Okay, the right to property, great. So, therefore, we have libertari libertarianism. Property rights are human rights. Yeah. We have total libertarianism. You agree with Iron Cap? Great talking to you. Oh. If you have property rights, then nobody can infringe on those property rights. So we have the NAP, we have property rights. Uh, that's ANCAP in a nutshell. Taxation violates property rights. Taxation doesn't violate my, the property rights. It does rights violate property rights. I... No, no you on. said we had a right I to property. I consider to be property rights. Uh, yeah, everyone has a right to property, but usually that to uh, property. But that property can be government. taken away. So then you don't have a right to property if it can be taken away from you. Yes, I agree. You don't have a right to property. So then why did you say we did? Well, I disagree now. You changed my mind. 
Okay, so what are some other uh, human rights? Would you say uh, universal health care would be a human right? I think people have a right to health. Yes. So, okay, so um, do you think uh, slavery, do you think uh, not being enslaved would be a right? Not being enslaved? Yes, I would agree that not being enslaved is a human right. Okay, so let's say you're on an island, you're on, you're on a desert island and there's one other person there and you're deathly ill. That other person is a doctor. Could you force him to perform medical care on you? I would pay him, but if no, I don't have any could money... Could you force him? Because you have a right to medical care. So therefore you should be able to force him. I have a right to medical care, but he has the right not to be a slave. Exactly, so, so it contradicts itself. Kind of like a kerfuffle. Exactly, so yeah. you can't have rights which contradict each other. That's what I'm saying. Your rights are arbitrary, and they're contradictory. Well, most people won't be put in that situation. I no, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hypothetical. Is... It's a reductio ad absurdum. Yeah, but hold on. Let me, let, let me finish. I know that it's a hypothetical, but what I'm saying is that most people wouldn't be put in a situation where those two rights are conflicted. It doesn't matter. Most they, people... It's logically possible for that to happen. And therefore, you are logically invalid. Actually, no. Being a doctor is his job. He's sworn an oath to say, I will not harm anyone. Or mm -hmm. I will not put anyone under harm. So, yeah. He's required to do it by the oath that he has no, taken. Uh, no, not, not harming anyone isn't the same as uh, refusing to give services to somebody. You're saying that health care is a right. This guy is a doctor. Doesn't so, therefore, you can force him to give you health care. You were saying that you 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 were saying that you can force this guy to give you health care, is what you were saying. I mean, we can go into promises and how they're not legitimate contracts if you want. You want to do that? I don't know what a promise is. Maybe promise, like uh, I so. I promise not to um, drink beer. Oh, promise. Okay, I thought yeah. you were saying something. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, it's the idea that uh, do you think that if. Um, a wife says, if a fiancé says, hey, I will marry you, you know, they agree to marry, and then they break off the engagement, do you think that's a violation of property rights? No. Exactly, it's not. It's not. Property. So, that's what I'm saying. Promises aren't valid contracts. It's just a promise. No, but that oath is, that oath is a nice charade. Uh, but the, the guy's actually signing, uh, signing a contract. The proposal, the proposal is the exact same. They... They are the same. They promise not to do this. They promise to do something rather, uh, but then they can uh, they can go against that promise. It might be morally wrong, but it's uh, ethically fine. I'm sorry, I lost you there. Say uh, so, that again. My internet connection got a little bit faster. That's right. Uh, basically, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, a fiance might promise to um, marry somebody, but that promise isn't valid. Uh, title transfer or anything it's not a valid contract so you can break con yeah you can break promises that's fine and i'm saying this oath is the exact same it's just a promise and a promise is not don't, a don't transfer you of property sign a contract? right you sign sure a contract a and bit, and right? you could sign a contract saying i will marry you uh, on this date but then you could go against that and it'd be perfectly fine it's just a promise well if they both well usually in that contract there's a part that says if we both consent to I don't want to marry you and they actually did break up then they both don't want to marry yeah no no, no. what I'm saying is even if uh, let's say A and B they're husband and wife they get engaged to marry and then A says uh, that she doesn't want to marry anymore uh, then B mm -hmm. can't then force her to marry him well tough shit shouldn't have done such a stupid decision should you so you don't think engagements can be broken off I think that if they both consent to the engagement being broken off, then yes. No, should. what if what if they don't both consent to the engagement being broken off? Do you think a then woman legally, can they refuse? Can't do shit. No, no, no. Uh, let's say a man proposes to a woman, she says yes, and then later on, a month down the line, she says, no, I don't want to get married anymore. Do you think she could be sued for that? Sued for not wanting to get married... There are situations where, yes, that would be possible. Like what situations? 
like let's say two families marry for political or economical reasons and then the other family says i've changed my mind and the other family has relied on that deal well i mean like uh, a good example would be then you're on, saying then you're saying promises are legitimate contracts so let's well, say if a that wife was a legitimate contract. Well, that... Then yes, if it oh, no, 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 no. You're promise, saying if that no. if that is a legitimate contract, but I'm asking you if the promise itself is a legitimate contract. A promise is not a contract. Exactly. So a promise is in... promise isn't a contract. Neither is the Hippocratic oath. I thought. Okay. I thought you signed something along with the Hippocratic. Sure, you can oath. sign something. You can sign plenty of things. Doesn't make it a, a valid contract. The only yeah, valid I mean, contract. Signed are... the contract along with the Hippocratic Oath. I the... thought that was a thing. Okay, but the only uh, what I'm saying is, even if you do sign something, it's still just a promise. You can sign plenty of things without it being a valid contract. The only valid contracts are those which transfer title to property. How are the only valid contracts? If every contract is invalid, how does no, that no, not every contract is invalid. Property. Plenty of contracts are valid. I'm saying because contracts are basically just an extension of property rights. Uh, it's uh, title transfer theory of, of contracts, if you want to look it up. No, contracts are a legal agreement. Okay. Uh, contracts... I don't care about legality. Property, I care about... A legal agreement I, care about I own this. I care about property rights here. I don't care about what the government says. I care about property rights. And contracts are an extension of property rights. They cannot infringe on property rights. Contracts are an agreement. That's what they are. Sure. They're a binding agreement. I, well, um, only binding it, it, that basically, the idea is that uh, I can promise something, but that's not necess and I can break that promise. Yeah, but a contract isn't a promise, is it? it a is, contract is binding. Is. That's the point of a contract. The point and of a contract it's only, is... It's only legitimately binding if you transfer title to property. That's the only binding part of the contract. Nothing else in a contract is binding under libertarian ethics. No. What a contract is... I'm sorry? What was that? Under about? libertarian ethics, that is. Unless you have some sort of diff different I ethical system. I am not system. a libertarian, though, am I? So the, then what is your ethical system? Do you, think con do you think promises are binding contracts? Do you think you should be bound to your promise? No. I think that a contract that has been signed by someone is a binding promise. Why does it have to be signed? Where does that come cruel, from? But a contract is a... Legit promise. Well, is this, ac is this axiomatic or something? Like, where does the signing come in? What does axiomatic mean? It, like, um, it's like the base Again, level. You just, assume it, you just assume it to be true. Yeah, self-evident. So, like, you know, if... Um, like, why do you have to sign it? Can you not have verbal contracts? Uh... As long as there's a witness there, because if the verbal contract it doesn't have someone else that can confirm. Okay, yeah, but this is practicality this. we're talking about. I'm talking about like pure ethically. You can have verbal contracts, so you don't have to sign it. So what makes a legitimate contract then? What makes a legitimate contract is legal. Is there legal backing from it? And what is that legal backing? Because I can say a verbal contract would be me saying yes, I will marry you. That would be a legal con. That would be a verbal contract. Uh, but I haven't transferred any title to contract. contract. But if she backs out, it's you versus it's her word against yours, and she's pursuing. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm not talking about practicality. I'm talking about ethics here. So, ethically, if I said yes, I will marry you, and then I backed out later, have I violated anybody's rights? In your opinion, I don't care if it would be provable in court or anything like that. Have I violated anybody's rights? If that is the situation. No, because it's just a promise. It's exactly. A so then verbal contracts are just promises. Is that the same on paper as verbal well? Contracts, verbal contracts have a witness there to... No, 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 the witness doesn't matter. The witness is just to prove it in court later. That's all the witness is doing. Yeah. that would that's, The court is what makes a contract what it is. Without the court... No, a contract is a valid part in property rights without anybody agreeing according to libertarianism according to reality that's just what it is you agreed to property rights already yeah and then i disagreed with them the contracts are a portion of property rights yeah and they're a portion of other things too 
Like what? You can't have contract without property. What would a contract be without any sort like of property? Agreements to. I agree, I to, agree to marry you. To X. I agree yeah. to marry you. Am I now bound to marry you? I'll have sex with you tonight. No, I don't actually want to have sex anymore. Should I have sex? Too bad, bitch. Exactly. Uh, That's what I'm saying. That's what you are proposing, is that I should be raped. Okay, I guess verbal contracts are just promises, so no. But a signed contract... Why does signing it change anything? Signing is just to prove that you were the one who agreed to it. That's all a signature does, is that it's your fingerprint, basically. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, I just want to address an arc with Iron Man. I understand that verbal agreements are enforceable contracts, but only when it transfers title to property. That's what I'm trying to show, okay? I understand that verbal contracts are fine, but that's what I'm trying to show. So anyway, yeah. So the signature is just showing that you were there. It's your... Yeah, the signature is there to ensure the fact that it's legit. Yeah, so because why is it... Go to some... So why is it only on paper that it's valid, in your opinion? Because you can prove that it actually happened then. No, 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 not about proving it later in court. That doesn't matter. I'm talking about ethically. No, not let's just say, proving it in let's court. Say you ha let's say you have a God's eye view of the situation, right? And you know that they agreed to this contract. Why is it only valid when it's on paper and not in words? Because usually when it's on paper, they can read out what the contract said. They can the, usually a, pay, a contract that's on paper has specific rules. Okay, but you can have that in verbal contracts as well. The verbal contract being, yes, I will well, marry you. Well, then you're you. stupid Those for are, signing that contract, and it's not my fault that you were so stupid. Yes, but what I'm saying is, a verbal contract can also be very specific, saying, yes, I will marry you. That is absolutely airtight specific. But why is that not valid? But saying, but writing out, yes, I will marry you. Why is that valid? But not saying it. Well, if we're assuming that there is no court system, which is what we're doing here, right? It, we're not necessarily assuming there is no court system. We're not. We're just not caring about the court system at the moment. We're to care about the ethics okay. of the situation. If we're not caring about the court system, then there's nothing wrong with a verbal contract. But, <laughs> but you said when it comes was. to my ethics. The court system is a part of the contract. No, no, no. I, but the court system is basically just figuring out what the what is correct here. It's figuring out who is in the right. But let's say we have a God's eye view. We are we are all knowing here, and we know yes. that they either write down "Yes, I will marry you" or they say "Yes, I will marry you." Why is saying "Yes, I will marry you" less legitimate than writing it down? It's not less legitimate. But you said it was, because verbal, you said verbal contracts weren't legitimate. When I said that, I thought that we were talking about, like, a court system shit. All right, I think we're going in circles here. I'm going to go uh, take a piss. Yeah. I'll see you another time. We can talk about this. Yeah, uh, I have, like, lessons in, like, in half this an hour. Is, yeah. so. This was a good conversation. I, yeah, um... see you. Holy guacamole.